Hi, good morning, everyone. Hope everyone's well caffeinated after last night. Uh, cool. Uh, welcome to creating a world scale AR experience using geospatial data. So, today, David and I are going to show you, uh, walk you through how we built an AR navigation demo using location data uh, to enhance mobile AR. Um, hopefully, we get you excited about what you can do with geospatial and AR, and uh, we really think that unlocking the true promise of AR means taking it off the tabletop and out of the room scale experience uh, and taking it onto the world. Um, and hopefully, we can show you how enabling procedural generation of uh, world scale experiences where your applications are location aware uh, and are contextualized to where you are anywhere in the world is kind of where AR is headed. So a little bit about us. Uh, my name is CU. Uh, I'm the uh, engineering manager of our Unity team at Mapbox. Um, I have a background in film visual effects and 3D animation. So I spent uh, maybe five years at Industrial Light and Magic. Um, there uh, I was building out tools to enable artists to create uh, lots of virtual worlds. Um, I got to work with some of the world's best but also most demanding artists. Um, and so I've gotten to kind of take that uh, level of tooling and building tools for artists and uh, get to keep doing that at Mapbox. And I'm David Rhodes. Um, I'm a software engineer at Mapbox working on the Unity SDK and building out demos to show what's possible with, with Mapbox and emerging technologies and, and new types of data. Uh, my background is in visual effects and, and video game development. So I've, I've worked at a uh, couple uh, major studios like LucasArts and Activision, Disney, things like that. So I'm excited to, to be here today to share some cool augmented reality stuff with you. Cool. Uh, before we get too far into uh, the demo, uh, we wanted to give you some background about Mapbox uh, because this is the kind of data platform that we used and we are from Mapbox. Uh, so what is Mapbox? Uh, it, Mapbox is a location services platform, and this means that we provide maps, navigation, and location search. Uh, and we try to make it easy for developers to integrate these services into their applications. Uh, we're a pretty developer-focused company. Um, and so what do we mean when we say maps? Uh, and we mean one of two things uh, when we say maps. So one are raster maps. So these are 2D images that we tile together to create uh, larger map canvases. Um, and these can be street maps, but also satellite images as well. Uh, but we also have vector maps. And uh, the way to think about vector maps is a geospatial database of the world stored as lines, points, polygons, and metadata. Um, and these vec then this vector data is streamed down from our servers onto clients to be rendered client-side. Uh, this means that the system is faster and more customizable um, because they're rendered on the client. Uh, they could be styled any number of different ways. Um, and so um, on top of our maps, we also have geocode, which is our location search. So this means searching for points of interest near a specific la longitude and latitude, or vice versa, associating um, points of interest with a uh, given longitude and latitude of where you are. Uh, the last part, the last building block that we used is our directions API. So this allows you to route from point A to point B using both walking and driving directions. Um, and our driving um, API includes uh, traffic data to reflect conditions in the real world. Cool. So Mapbox and Unity. So the Unity team at Mapbox builds out an SDK uh, for Unity to enable uh, access to all of Mapbox's location services, and this is what we use to build out this demo that you're going to see. Um, cool. Yeah, so what you see here is sort of um, you can understand what the vector tile data turns into, and and some of the, the styling capabilities that we enable developers to, to create. Um, this is a, a demo that we've built with a, a company in uh, Budapest, uh, Nemesis, and you can kind of get an idea of like the different types of visuals that you can, you can build uh, in Unity, as well as the types of data that Mapbox has available for you. And just as you can build out game experiences um, with AR Core and AR Kit and Unity's uh, AR interface plugin, it makes it easy to integrate Mapbox data into AR apps. Um, and so these components allow developers to build, uh, to bring in Mapbox's data into AR applications. So here you're seeing uh, 
a demo of um, satellite imagery and vector maps uh, set in San Francisco built in Unity. Um, <clears throat> When ARKit was announced in June, we saw a lot of kind of really immediate interest in Mapbox and visualizing the data. Um, kind of almost within hours, this example on the left showed up on Twitter of mapping your Strava ride uh, on satellite imagery draped over terrain uh, data. Um, and this app is also now live uh, in the App Store uh, once uh, iOS 11 launched last week. Um, what what was exciting about this was um, this was a new way to visualize data for us. Uh, seeing maps in 2D, uh, maps are very data rich, but it also takes a lot of like cognitive bandwidth to read a 2D map. Um, what AR allows people to do is interact with the map as they would a physical map. So now you, this device that you have in your hand is also your input. And this is a really great entry point for people who aren't familiar with like 3D graphics or played a lot of video games and aren't necessarily as tech savvy. Um, so for visualizing the Strava ride, you can move around the phone to kind of see uh, where your rides are. And this slide on the right is um, a developer who mapped his personal Foursquare check-ins around San Francisco. Uh, these uh, tabletop experiences are really exciting for us, but we definitely believe that the future of AR lies in location-aware experiences. So we wanted to connect uh, location to these AR experiences and create an application that could contextualize your AR session based on where you are in the world. And so we built out this navigation demo. Uh, we picked navigation because that's what uh, that's one of the most common use cases for maps that people are used to. And so here we're placing a map on the ground uh, in San Francisco. We're a couple blocks away from Union Square, which is a park uh, in downtown San Francisco and we're navigating using the Directions API to that park and taking it into AR space. So uh, we're gonna follow this route line throughout the city um, and as we're walking, we can place decorations in AR to also further like contextualize where you are and what you're seeing. Um, yeah, and here these route lines are giving us turn by turn directions as we're walking through the city so we know where we are and we know where we're headed. Um, and once we've blown this map up to world scale mode, we can see all these uh, points of interest through uh, the AR lens. Cool. And I think I've just about freaked enough tourists out to arrive at my destination. Um, yeah, and so this is an overview of kind of the demo that we built out. Um, so now let's take a deep dive into various components and how we connected uh, geospatial data, GPS location data on the phone to enhance these AR sessions. <clears throat> cool. So the first part of, the first component of this demo was our tabletop AR mode. And so what you're seeing here is us taking vector tiles and creating a custom style for this demo. Um, uh, we are also in this slide doing a geocode search for nearby locations and points of interest. Uh, we're limiting the results based on a bounding box of where you are and also prioritizing based on your current location. Um, you can, if you look closely, you can see on those points of interest. We also have metadata about the address, the type of um, location, and also like the name of the points of interest. This slide is a little technical, but um, this is what kind of the raw vector data looks like. Uh, when I say geospatial database, I mean like an actual database. So here you see polygons that are mapped as longitude and latitude, so we're able to uh, correlate buildings to real world locations. Um, and on the right you see some of the metadata associated with it, so addresses and street names as well. The next part of that tabletop experience is the routing. So here we're using a directions API to route from point A to point B uh, using our POIs. Um, integrating these pieces make this map a lot more interactive and navigable. So here we're not just looking at data on a map, we're also interacting with this map in AR. And to give you an idea of what the kind of raw data we're working with here, in our directions API responses you have turn by turn directions as well as written instructions on where to turn and um, uh, also geometry of the line segments of where you need to go. Cool. So uh, the most exciting part of this demo for us was the um, world scale AR. 
we wanted to see how much we could push AR and AR kit and AR core to be location aware and see what kinds of experiences that are open up in AR once you're able to contextualize your AR sessions. Um, so in order to do this, we created an AR library within Unity to connect your device uh, location readings to the AR sessions, which aren't as location aware. Um, here in this transition, we're scaling up our map that you saw in the tabletop mode uh, from a table in front of you and scaling it up to one-to-one -one world scale mode. And what you're seeing here is What you're seeing here is the streets, the route lines, and the buildings kind of snapping into place uh, in the real world since they are uh, geolocated. Cool. So the uh, use case of error navigation was really exciting for us. That's these arrows that you're seeing are the route lines from the directions API that you saw earlier, uh, just with the different textures slapped on top of them in world scale mode. Um, the directions response includes turn-by-turn -turn directions, which is what you're seeing in the waypoint there. Um, since these waypoints are also geolocated and have a lat long associated with them, we can set triggers to trigger once you get close enough. And so this can also be applied to kind of generic points of interest. So as long as you have uh, latitude longitude, you can use this technique to trigger events. So for instance, uh, you can imagine setting up um, a system of uh, cafes so that once uh, a user or a player gets close enough to a cafe, you can trigger an event within your AR uh, application. Um, and so we think that this can make AR experiences more spontaneous and personal based on where the user is and what they're doing at the time. Uh, we mentioned uh, earlier that uh, maps are very data dense. Um, and for that reason, it's kind of hard for a lot of people to read maps. Um, but looking at this visual right here, uh, we see where AR and geodata could go. Um, it's really powerful when you can kind of strip away all the data that you don't care about. So in this example, we kind of just care about the route line and the turn-by-turn -turn directions, um, and we're just showing the information that you need to place it in AR. Uh, we believe that this creates a much more natural experience and makes maps and geodata a lot more accessible to a lot more people. So one of the other things that you saw in that video was virtual billboards. So it's not just the uh, directions and route lines that get blown up to world scale mode, but also these buildings are able to be correlated to their real world buildings as well, since the building footprints are mapped using lat longitudes and latitudes. Um, here you're seeing the black boxes are the 3D meshes of the buildings, and we're using um, those meshes to decorate uh, billboards on the sides of the buildings. Cool. Um, yeah, so this technique gives uh, within the within Unity and within the SDK uh, gives developers access to essentially a 3D map of the entire world that is to real world scale. Uh, synchronization of the AR kit session with your location plus this accurate map data of streets, buildings, and points of interest enables matching 3D buildings to their corresponding real world buildings for use in AR. Uh, and these buildings uh, can be used not just for decoration, but they can also be used for occlusion. So one of the kind of pain points of AR is uh, you could have AR elements uh, floating uh, on top of things that are in front of it. So uh, using these buildings for occlusion, you could imagine having a car in augmented reality uh, only show up on screen after it's past the building that's uh, behind. Cool. Using a similar technique to what we just described, we can also place uh, building labels and information about buildings in AR. I mentioned earlier that we had metadata about these buildings. Um, and so this is a really powerful way to contextualize AR experience for the real world. You now have access to knowledge of what you're looking at through the camera, not just what AR kit and AirCore can kind of sense uh, in their session, but also metadata and actual information that contextualizes your AR session. Uh, in this example, we are using a gaze indicator to uh, raycast from the camera to intersect with what building you're looking at and only showing you uh, information about the building that's in front of you. Uh, cool. Uh, now I'll hand it out to David to kind of talk over some of the technical limitations that we found while building out this demo. 
Yeah, so now that you've seen the tech demo, we can talk a little bit about like the reality of the situation and, and where this might go in the future, what the current limitations are in terms of implementation details and, and just technical limits. So obviously, as many of you are aware and CU pointed out, our AR session has no initial uh, awareness of location or, or heading, really. Um, and <laughs> manual calibration is just the worst. Like, it's not something you want your user to go through. How many of you here have been told to do that? And how many of you have actually done that? Yeah, it's ridiculous, right? So we don't want to force users into that kind of experience. Um, but uh, the library that CU mentioned, we can use location services to calculate an offset uh, relative to like our AR session so that we can place that session in the real world and our virtual objects will appear to be in the correct places. Uh, likewise, you know, device compasses are accurate only within you know, plus or minus 15 degrees if you're not near any metal or you know, other interference. Uh, so sometimes it'll be 180 degrees off. But we can derive heading from uh, location traces, so just getting consistent updates as, as you go. <clears throat> but uh, we can't rely uh, too much on that either because there's also like noise in the GPS, uh, especially in urban areas. Still, uh, solutions won't come just from te technical advancements and, and processing of these traces and this data. We also must innovate on the user experience because this is not just a challenge of how to do it, but why you're doing it and why it's meaningful to people. Um, so as I mentioned, with, with GPS specifically, you can kind of see uh, this is an example of, of GPS traces. And you can see there's kind of like a lot of noise. And here's an example of like that data that's been filtered. And, and so in terms of lessons learned, you know, one of the things in, with regards to the technical impl implementation details, you, know, you definitely want to try to like filter this, this data so that you can accurately place the user in a specific location. Ways you might do that is with uh, map matching or, or filtering data based on physical and probabilities. Like my GPS says that I moved 100 meters in a second, and that's not physically possible. Um, but in terms of the user experience side of things, you also don't want to overwhelm the user with too much uh, information at once. Uh, don't show them things that aren't relevant. This is kind of something we learned as we were developing this, this demo. And that's kind of why we implemented the, the gaze indicator to give users the, the ability to sort of choose what they want to focus on. Uh, additionally, as CU mentioned, with like objects that are sort of floating on top of physical things that are in front of you, uh, you might want to like consider geofencing your AR experiences. So this means you know, as you enter specific locations or specific uh, areas, regions, like geometry, which you can actually do with like Unity colliders and the Mapbox SDK, you can now have the user experience something and activate the camera when they go into a specific location and then make it so that you, you don't actually see that if you're outside of a certain radius or something like that. This way you don't have to worry about trees and other uh, physical objects blocking your, your experience. In terms of like looking to the future, what are the, what are the applications here? And I, I personally believe that the possibilities are endless. Everyone's eagerly awaiting the day when we have augmented reality glasses and we just have these, these experiences like right on our face <laughs> all the time. Uh, so that way people can advertise to us. Um, but new immersive experiences are already being developed. For example, uh, this has been developed by uh, a Finnish developer, Lari. And here what we're doing is using our vector tile data to create pathways um, from our Mapbox streets data. And we build a runtime navigation mesh using that data inside of parks. And then we can have uh, you know, AI agents that actually follow these, these pathways in the parks, which help create a new, like, really deep, immersive experience. And if you're smart about the way that you approach the problem, as I mentioned before, 
you can kind of get around some of the limitations of, of what these experiences should be. Do they belong everywhere? Probably not, but let's make it fun and, and new, and let's learn together as a community how to sort of like, why we want to do this, right? And I think, you know, this is just an example. You could easily take this uh, and expand on it and build complex rules and gameplay logic for your applications or games with like rich global data. But I also think there's a lot of potential with, 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 with multiplayer. For example, these very happy people in the park playing together and seeing the same thing. So with location awareness and, and uh, you know, just simple latitude, longitude, and heading information for each player, now you can kind of build uh, these, these synchronous multiplayer experiences. I mean, I'm, I'm imagine like Pokemon Go, everyone sees the same Pokemon, but from different places in the park or whatever. Um, and that, that's just the tip of the iceberg, though. You can, you know, user-generated content placed in the real world could really change the way that we explore our surroundings and, and experience asynchronous experiences as well. So we can geotag uh, objects that users place. Um, imagine, like, Minecraft creations that have just been dropped in the middle of the park, and people can go and see it and expand on it and build, build on top of that. And it's like this living, evolving experience. So you go to a location, leave something behind for the next player to interact with. And, and just decorate the world. Uh, like, that, that seems really compelling to me because my life would become kind of like a, an art gallery. Like, you, you just see an art gallery wherever you're going. Cool, thanks David. Um, David's gonna pull up a live demo of the app right here. Um, but just to recap, some of the building blocks that enables to do this in AR, um, to build out this experience of an AR, uh, AR app that exists beyond just the room that you're in. Uh, there's one, this global map layer of the world, uh, having all this uh, geo data to contextualize your AR sessions to connect uh, what you're seeing through your camera um, beyond just what um, your mobile AR device is able to detect right in front of it. And then on the device, uh, the application is reconciling your mobile AR session with uh, your device location, which is another key component of this. Um, yeah, go for it. As we build all these tools, we're really excited to see what developers can do with it. Um, we make these demos to kind of inform what tools we need to build for developers, and I think it's really exciting for us to see that after this, um, we kind of know where we need to head in terms of building out better support for uh, making it easier for developers to access the device location. Um, and just to see, and to enable more people to uh, see what is possible when you marry uh, AR with location awareness and the contextual data of the world, uh, leveraging these tools to kind of connect your AR experiences to the entire world around it. Uh, there's been a lot of buzz in the last couple months about uh, AR, and a lot of people are kind of asking questions like, what a 3D map of the world would look like for AR? And from our experience of building out this demo, we can say that it's definitely a lot closer than people think it is. Uh, where we at Mapbox are really excited to see what developers can do with it today, um, and we're gonna keep building out tools to make it easier for you guys to build those experiences. Uh, yeah, so I was just kind of like playing around with the demo here, um, just so you can see that it's like a real thing, sort, sort of. Um, but yeah, like you can kind of, uh, one reason why we built this sort of transition here from tabletop to, to real world is to help actually place the user, like they, they feel like the application knows where they are, and, and, it, and that helps you kind of make the leap from a traditional map to like trusting that we know where we are and, and the na then the navigation comes after that, right? Like, I can actually follow this route line because I believe it. And then um, this is just kind of like a little UX learn thing that we, we felt really helped work because sometimes a user might start an experience and they're just facing the wrong direction. They're like, well, I don't understand what's going on. Why do I see these just green lines? And this sort of floating arrow represents like, hey, just like turn around and then you kind of fade it out as you actually point in the right, the right direction. And this could be extended for other purposes just like, placing something on the ground for the user in front of them that's like always there but sort of hiding and showing it as, as needed is, it just worked really well for us. Cool. Um, yeah, we have a couple minutes left for questions. The rest of the team will be at our booth down the expo hall today, but um, 
yeah, feel free to come by and talk to us and check out these demos. And we have some other AR applications uh, for you to try out at the booth as well. Um, but if there are any questions, we have like five minutes. Uh, yeah, if you could come to the mic, please. Do you have uh, internal data mapping for like buildings and stuff that we can probably custom upload or basically you already have on your own? Yeah, um, a lot of our users will upload their own data to Mapbox. So once you make an account, you can upload your own data and that's kind of private to you or you can make it public to whoever you want to. Um, we have users that use it to kind of map out their own neighborhoods or you can map out um, kind of within your own building as well using our tools. Just to follow up, is there an easy way to kind of uh, uh, capture the data? Like, say, for example, I want to capture a 3D form data and like upload it into your system. Um, those aren't tools that we kind of provide, but there are kind of, there are tools that we can point you to. Okay. Yeah. Oh, with augmented reality, now you could just go and like create that data on the fly and uh, just upload it yeah. right from the device. I mean, imagine going to a location that's like a construction site and just. Uh, doing like 3D sketching right there on site and then just uh, save and upload it to the cloud and it's already geotagged. Okay, the database that you uh, pull from, is it just yours or do you use something like uh, uh, MapQuest or something like that to get the uh, GIS information for the global? Yeah, so we uh, have our own data set and we actually also power MapQuest maps now. So. Um, yeah, we do have our global coverage of data, and we source that from various sources. Follow up on that, is that available? Uh, the data? Is a service, so let's say I'm making an app, much like what you're demoing here. Mm -hmm. um, I don't wanna go out and write these filters and you know, do all this stuff. I uh -huh. leverage something else, right? So is that available? Yeah, so you have access to the entire database. Uh, that's part of the service that Mapbox provides. Um, some of the other services um, that aren't necessarily Unity specific, but we do have a tool called Mapbox Studios that's a web app that lets you customize that data so you can do web styling, but you can also filter out uh, just the data that you want. So for instance, if you just need streets in your AR application, you can create a map data set that just has streets. Okay, and did you do any kind of image recognition to align those like billboards and things, or is it really strictly um, Geolocation. Yeah, right now we're aiming for just geolocation. Um, we're on the lookout for image recognition tools out there, but yeah. Yeah, that was just the 3D building extrusions that we used to sort of like put those objects. And, and um, I've also done it like occlusion demos, as CU talked about earlier. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, there are companies out there that we're aware of that are doing some advanced computer vision type stuff to more accurately, uh, to help like, understand where you are down to centimeter level accuracy as opposed to just relying on GPS and location services. Um, but then you could also use like depth sensors and things like that to, to build more advanced occlusion. Uh, Thank you. Hi, uh, great stuff. Um, do you guys do any, um, or is there any support for like multiplayer two, you know, two devices? Because in your demo I was thinking, oh well, be great if you know somebody was picking you up to like see them try, drive in or you know kind of know how far away especially like when you know uber is one example yeah. but i can think of some other more um uh subversive um personal you know connections that might be made yeah i mean the the biggest challenge here is just getting that location really nailed down and and there's rumor that the next like next generation mobile devices are going to have enhanced uh, gps chips in them so the accuracy will be a little bit better. Um, but once we solve that problem of location, multiplayer is just gonna naturally follow, right? Because all you're doing is synchronizing latitude, longitudes, and a heading for, for each player in that, in that experience, right? Uh, so yeah, absolutely. Yeah, keep your eyes peeled. You might see some, some multiplayer stuff soon. Okay, so the, so the API right now doesn't have, does it have a way of like sh sharing data or of querying someone else's data if, if you had like their ID or something? Yeah, so uh, we don't directly provide like multiplayer services or anything like that, but 
it would be trivial to just like synchronize those. And what you would do is use like Mapbox. We have a conversions library in our SDK that would help you synchronize those locations relative to your own like client map. Okay, cool, thanks. Yeah. Uh, I just had a question about <clears throat> your data location. Is it possible to store the geospatial data that you have and use your APIs on a local server rather than um, on your server? Yeah, uh, that's a service we provide and that's just kind of like a sales enterprise conversation. Okay, yeah. thanks. Cool. I think we have time for uh, one yeah, last we'll be, question. Yeah. Yeah. And then we'll be at the booth to talk about, if you want to discuss that further. Yeah. Okay, you said you, would ab you were able to uh, uh, map, have customers uh, map inside of a building. Uh, what about multi-floor structures? How do you handle elevation and such? Um, that's a complex answer, and uh, I'd love to talk about it because this stuff really excites me. So just please uh, come by the booth and, and have a discussion with us. Cool. Uh, well, thank you, everyone, for getting up this morning for this talk. Uh, we'll get out of here. Thank you.